Hello, everyone. This is Marita, one who catches lightning with the Path of Ish podcast, Walking with Our Shadow, where we share ancient indigenous teachings of remembrance, all so we can walk and learn how to walk a path of radical self love. Welcome, everyone, to another opportunity to sit together, to have the circle hold us in a way where we feel rejuvenated, where we are able to remember, where the circle itself holds and delineates a boundary to give us space, to stay curious, to stay courageous, to stay playful and prayerful. So today, let us ease our way into this circle. And we're going to take a longer time to get into this circle. to allow ourselves the time. So many times we rush from thing to thing. We don't make the time to arrive. And then other times we know that we have to delineate this as sacred time or me time or whatever you want to call it. And then we avoid it because we don't feel like we have the space. Or that when it comes to meditation or mindfulness or ceremony, it's too elaborate. Who has time for that? When we live in a world that wants us to go faster, even though it's breaking down, our systems are breaking down. So there is actually no possible way to be truly effective in the system that is running or asking our lives <laughs> to be sacrificed for. Just try to be on customer service and call customer service. Recently, (laughs) an episode that lasted three months of trying to get something done through customer service. And thankfully, my wife took care of most of it because I I struggle being on the phone like that for so long. And she would be on the phone three to four hours at a time. And she knows how to manage and go through systems, or at least these systems, more effectively than I can. We all have our gifts. And one of the reasons this is coming into the circle is because of our expectations of getting things done, accomplishments, and how sometimes this way of how we live our life of accomplishing thing keeps us from doing things, even taking time for ourselves, because if we can't accomplish it, why should we even try? And when we're stuck in archaic or mundane or circles that don't hold us anymore or systems that are breaking down are not effective because they cannot keep up with our demand or the demand we've been programmed to have, right? It kind of, you know, you pass it on. your 
boss, your parent, your partner demands something from you at a specific time. And therefore you pass on that demand and that need of quote unquote efficiency or conductivity or anything like that, you pass it on. It becomes then a learned trait and habit. And then when we create in our society means, right, that are supposed to make our life easier or manageable, it's in part because if it's manageable, then we can do more. Hence the maraud of apps of how to organize your time how to organize projects, how to, as they say, multiply yourself. How to reuse products. It's because we have this pull or this push or both, we're being torn in, in kind of two ways of what we are told is needed to be effective and of value in society. And whether you live like this or not, there is always still a push and a pull when it comes to your relationship with how you show up. So let's take a little bit more time to show up. And in this episode, I want you to make sure that you're checking in with yourself and just noticing yourself, observing yourself and see when you show up to the episode fully with your body, your mind, and your essence. And notice when your mind leaves or wanders and then comes back. And notice when your body wanders and comes back, it's fidgety. Notice when your essence does. And if you haven't been working with these parts, I highly recommend go back to listen to the three breath practice. Go follow me, go listen to the other podcasts, go follow me, go take classes. We talk about this a lot. So let us begin by really having an attitude of observation. And when you are observing things, right, you can observe them sharply, you can observe them critically, or you can observe them with curiosity. So today, let's bring in that curiosity today in our observation so it is softer. So the energy of the observation is about excitement, about where will I land? When will I arrive? Where is my journey in this episode? And if we can stay like that, then we will have an opportunity to have moments of awe. Awe is that tenuous fork in the road, right? Whether you're going to go to, wow, that is so awesome. It inspires me. It is bigger than me. It is amazing. I couldn't believe it. And it, wow, how amazing or awesome, so frightening. 
So that's the most amazing thing about awe is that it is that fork in the road that where we ha- we make a decision. It is beyond mindfulness or observation. And beyond awe, well, there's more beyond that. But in society now, the way we have been teaching or the Western world has been teaching people, we are at that state of mindfulness. We're at that state where breath is coming back. We're at that state of connecting the dots. The next step is a study and a practice of awe. And we do that at the Path of Ish. We do that at Rockstar School. But today, let us slowly arrive. So let us take our time. We've already taken about 10 minutes to even get ourselves ready about our expectations. So we will open up the circle now as we address the directions on this plane above and below. And so let us begin. Hmm. Let us just settle in. And as we settle, let us be grateful for this opportunity again. So with gratitude, grace, and thanksgiving, we address the direction of the East and the guardian spirits of the East of whatever tradition you come from. And allow yourself this time in the East The East always reminds us, yes, with that rising sun, that we get to begin again. So at any point in this practice where you feel like, oh, oh my God, I I got lost or I need to get back, remember that the East is holding that opportunity for us to begin again. Thank you, East. Now moving down and around to the South. We greet, we welcome, we ask the South and the guardians of the South to hold us in the circle today. And the South is that place where things become bone and flesh, right? This is really the beginning of incarnation or the physical reality of life. It's where we are created. So this is why it's called the place of the student, right? And this is where we get to go back and sit in the South whenever we want, not just to learn, but to create. For some, the East is water, beginning, idea, the void, enlightenment. And then the South moves us really into the birth, carnation, incarnation on this planet, on this plane. And then once we feel good about that, and so with that, we move up to the West. As we greet the West, asking the West to hold, to witness us in the circle. Hmm. 
And allow yourself that in each of these points, it's not just about you greeting. It's about you receiving. You're asking to be held. You're asking to be witnessed. You are entering into relationship. The relationship of the West is the opportunity to be with thunder beings and lightning and pressure systems and storms and wind. A part of nature that we think we cannot see or does not affect us, but affects everything. In some traditions, this is the place where leaders sit. It is a hot seat in Sweat Lodge. It is one of the hottest parts of Sweat Lodge, but it's where in other parts where leaders sit because then they can face the East, which is that place of remembering and enlightenment. Enlightenment in the sense of Staying connected to the memory and to the promise and to the road and the path that we're on, in this case, the East, to begin again. With gratitude to the West, We move up to the north. Again, here we discover where our bones rest, where our ancestors, where we return back to the soil. And we ask the North to witness us, to hold us, to be in relationship with us, with this medicine that it brings to us. Not just connection to our ancestors, but connection to the cycle of life itself. And then we come back down to the east and we acknowledge the direction below us. The earth who is our mother, our grandmother, who holds us in a larger circle. We give thanks knowing that we sprouted up from her, that we are made of all of her elements incarnated in this vessel, which we call a human body. And just as we greet the below, we greet the above. The sun, the moon, the lights that give us life and light our way and remind us and remember with us that part of the cycle of being is not just the ability to of drudgery, but to remember, to be inspired, to look up to the heavens, which help guide us as they help inspire us. And then as we ask to enter in the circle and enter into the circle, we greet ourselves on this plane and the energies of this plane and all of the beings 
on this plane, all of the kingdoms, the insect kingdom, the animal kingdom, right? The four-legged, those that fly, those that crawl, those that swim, the plants and the trees, the microbes, the elements, the colors, all beings on this plane. Recognizing we are just one part. Hmm. And as we've allowed ourselves to arrive, we welcome ourselves by taking three breaths. Let us begin in and out through that nose with that first breath, bringing our essence into this time and into this place, into the circle. In and out through the nose, bringing our body into this time, into this place, into the circle. Hmm. In and out through the nose, bringing our essence into this time, into this place, into the circle. Allowing ourselves to arrive. And if you need more breaths, if you're one of my students and have moved on to your fourth or fifth breath practice, please take those breaths now or if you just need them. Remember to take care of yourself throughout this podcast. Now, we've spoken about curiosity, observation, courage, play, prayfulness, awe, how awe can either lead us to fear or to wonder. And today, we've already started taking the time to arrive. And the reason being is we wanted to observe what was really going on? Were we really showing up? Or were we still in that push and that pull of obligation? And since obligation is now here, today's topic is accountability. As we dig in a little bit more, the Webster's Dictionary says the definition of accountability is the obligation or willingness to accept responsibility for one's actions. Now, I want you to observe yourself the moment that I said accountability. Are you still here? Did your mind go somewhere? Did your body freeze up? And where is your essence? And just notice yourself with this word. What does accountability bring up? And if you are one who journals, take time to write your notes here. And if you're out walking, just take time to be with yourself and take a pause to just check in. Now, if you notice yourself retracting as part of your reaction or going into a place of stress or shame, notice that. Today, I want to bring in a different perspective when it comes to this word of accountability. And I want to share 
not the promise that it has for others, right? Because that's where we kind of like, oof, obligation. But the promise it holds for us. Now again, Webster's talks about the responsibility of one's actions to accept your actions. Well, what are actions? If we go back to that podcast where we went through from beliefs all the way through actions and destiny, we know that actions do determine our destiny, but actions are the manifestation, or you could say, or they show up as our habits. If we have a habit of worry, how does that show up as an action? If we have a habit of getting out of our boundaries, how does that show up as an action? So here again, as we are tracing this back, what we're looking and seeing that accountability is really showing us our habits. And if we take all the habits all the way up back, right, through our words and take it all the way up through our belief, what accountability really means is being responsible for your beliefs and how they take action in your life, how they affect you, and then also how they affect others, because we all affect each other. Now, sometimes, right, through the belief, words, actions, thoughts, all of that, right, belief, thoughts, words, we have to be cognizant not just of beliefs, but of biology. We have to be responsible, one might say, in understanding how we function. We have to know how our brain works. And this is not a general idea or knowledge of how the human brain works, but how your brain works, how your body works. So how does your mind really work? So many teachings out there are about mastering the mind. But so many times we don't look at biologically how our mind is set up or not set up for what we think is successful. Learning how your vessel operates, not just to conquer it, but really to get intimate with it and understand it, then allows you to show up more completely as you in every situation. I'm not telling you in this podcast to master your mind and your body, to negate your feelings, to put anything down. I'm not telling you to go out to the gym and, you know, pump iron. I'm not telling you to do any of that. I'm not telling you to do mindfulness hacks, all those hacks that are out there, or how to hack your habits. I'm asking, are you ready? 
for a deep and intimate relationship with yourself. To be accountable for how you operate. This is what I tell my students. When they enter into my containers on my official students, I tell them, I'm not here to teach you to be me. I am here to give you tools that if they work for you, you can use for you to get into a different habit where your habit has space for you, where your words have space for you, where your beliefs have space for you. I see the potential that accountability can give us the key of who we truly are and the promise not to live or show up how you think people want you to, but for you to show up as you. Now you might say, that doesn't work, Marina. Society wouldn't work this way. If we took more time to show up authentically, if other people then took the same time to show up authentically, then we would know what's going on. Let me give you an example. I meet with my mentors before classes and I tell them, look, you have to be honest with me. What, how are you showing up today? You need to be completely honest. Are you feeling well? Did you eat enough? Are you, you know, didn't you not get enough sleep? Are you, are you stressed? We need to know this. We need to know as a group. Because as we're setting the circle, we need to know who can hold and who can't. Because we form a circle as a community not everyone is going to show up the same way. And so we accommodate by co-creating. We don't show up to an opportunity to just compete with each other, but to co-create. So as you shift away from accountability as part of competition, a whole other opportunity of co-creation shows up. And if we can start to do this more often, take the time, then that conversation of reciprocity that we've been having on and off for a while is an easier way we can show up. Because in our reciprocal exchange, we show up complete as ourselves, which might mean we have a deficit of sleep, resources, or whatever, but we're complete in acknowledging that. So then someone else 
can show up complete. And maybe their completion is they have an overage of something. And since you two are not competing against each other, you can co-create and you can show up exactly in that moment in time, uniquely as two individuals. And this idea of co-creation then is that everyone has to be the same because it's not true. And we don't definitely have not created human systems of equality. The more that I hold myself accountable, the more I allow myself to accept who I am and how I operate, And then from there, I can start making decisions, not outside of myself, not to mask things, but that really bring me back to me. I can then look at my reactions, I can look at my biology, I can look at my frame of mind at that time, my frame of body, my frame of essence. I can look at all of it. And instead of sitting at that fork in the road and going off into fear, I can go into a place of wonder, not just wondering what am I going to do with all this, but wonder, awe, majesty, knowing that that comes not because I'm consistently the same, but because I'm uniquely different for each situation throughout the day. And knowing that each opportunity throughout the day, as it presents itself in a situation of action, interaction, and reaction, I can begin again. I can make a mistake and I can begin again. I can always choose as the circle holds me to begin again, to assess again, to pause. Gather myself. Create myself in that moment. Stand in the storm and know that my ancestors have my back and know that part of my ancestors aren't just human, but that I am surrounded by beings on this plane that witness me where I am. And that is enough. Today, this invitation
of accountability is an invitation to show up uniquely and completely you in this time and this space in this moment. And so let us witness each other by just doing a small check-in and meditation. Let's reset and let's take our three breaths in and out through the nose. Hmm. Welcoming our mind into this time and space. In and out through the nose. Welcoming our body into this time and space. In and out through the nose. Welcoming our essence into this time and space. And as you arrive again back here, back to you, let's do this small check in and check in how am I feeling in this moment now physically? How am I feeling in this moment now mentally? How am I feeling in this moment now emotionally? How do I show up for myself? Mentally, how do I show up for myself emotionally? How do I show up for myself physically? Are there ways that I can be more honest about my mental state or frame of mind at this moment? Are there ways I can show up and be more authentic in my emotions? Are there ways I can show up more honestly in my relationship with my physical vessel? Am I willing to be accountable for how my mind is shaped and operates. If I know that accountability will give me the freedom to accept my mind and its biology, its physiology, its psychology. Am I ready to 
to embrace the accountability and responsibility of me as an emotional being in this world to be honest with myself to create boundaries and balance for myself to not abandon my emotions or try to have my mind control them but to show up to have coexistence with me and my mind How can I manifest this experience of life knowing that it exists in my body and not betray my body? To not think of this idea of the body as a temple that of something that is perfect or chiseled or looks a certain way but that my body and the accountability that I have to it to nourish it, to nurture it, to understand it and the challenges it is to have a human body and to get help for it when the systems of a- around me and the media have always tried to deny the body, to separate and create a void and use the body as a form of exchange. How can I bring value back to my human vessel as being an important part of the coexistence of my mind and my essence. A coexistence of my mind and my emotions. For if I did not have a human vessel, I could not experience my emotions. I could not experience my mind. It would have no place to be. How can I look at my body as the perfect opportunity to join myself on this path of responsible, authentic, connection and relationship of reciprocity between my body, my mind, my essence, and the beings around me. Hmm. And with that, we allow ourselves a chance to pause and sit in awe of ourselves. I welcome you to come back to this meditation 
and to find ways to not workshop it or think of creating goals of betterment that push you outside of who you are, but to find deep ways of reciprocity, connection, co-creation, authenticity, as you take accountability and embrace who you are. With that, we give thanks with our three breaths to our body, to our mind, to our essence. And we give thanks for the circle that held us, teaching us that we can begin again in the East, we can create and take form in the South, we can stand and change in the winds of existence in the West and in the North with our ancestors. We give gratitude to Mother Earth and to all the sky beings above us and all those existing on this plane. As we close this circle, knowing we can always come back and enter into relationship throughout the day, every time we connect. Shaday. Once again, it is with deepest gratitude that I bow to you for joining me on this podcast, this episode, this circle, this platica, this meditation, this remembering. I hope that you have stayed curious. I hope to see you in the circle again next week. So make sure that you like or follow. Until then, may you be blessed with abundance of peace and radical self-love.